Hey guys, can you hear me? Okay, just to let you know, at the end of closed session, my mic stopped working, but I didn't have anything to say anyway. Um, if it if at some point you see me leaving the meeting, it would be because I'm leaving because I need to reboot to come back in because that's what the, the computer instructed me to do, but I didn't because we were so close to, to being done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so it's at 1.4, we're reconvening into open session and reporting out. Um, no votes were taken during closed session, so there's nothing formal to report out at this moment. We did... Um, in 1.1 do the approval of the board agenda before we went into closed session and 1.2 we did the pledge of allegiance so those two things were done before we went into closed session so now we're coming out of closed session um so we're at 2.0 consider approval of the consent agenda do i have a motion i make a motion to approve i am part of second all in favor Aye. All right. Aye. 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 Thank you. Passes five zero. Okay. Um, we're going on to uh, three point report re reports information correspondence. So three point one is um, reports from um, school districts, district organizations, um, council or committees. Um, I, yeah. have a, I have one from SRTA, Sarah, whenever I can just read it. I just got an email saying to read this, please. Okay. Um, I have one that Jill sent me earlier in the week. Um, Probably the same one. And um, does it, does Tim, if you could look at your, does it start, please share with Board Wednesday? Okay. Yep. If you could yep. read that one and then later, I, she, you know, just, sent uh, something for public comment as well. So we'll read the other thing when we get to the public comment. But if you could read the official report, please. Absolutely. So it says, uh, Dear SRUSD Board of Trustees, teachers are winding down this unprecedented school year, uh, cleaning out desks, filling out cubes, and preparing our students for promotion to the next grade level. <clears throat> Understandably, we are all feeling a, a bit stressed, eager to wrap up this extraordinary year, yet already missing our students as they move forward into their next academic year. With reference to next year, the SRTA extends our commitment to work cooperatively with district policymakers and administrators to design a new academic setting in which we will be teaching. Uh, we have all learned so much with online teaching and remote learning and will be eager to work together to share what worked what was successful and where we feel confident that we can achieve student success. To that end, we would like to recommend that a task force, that a task force composed of teachers and administrators be created as the platform to build an exceptional beginning for the 2020-2021 school year. We end the year feeling thankful that our students, our teachers, and our staff have remained healthy and safe. We look forward to the new year 
working together as partners, colleagues, and champions for student success. I respectfully submitted Jill Lutz, President, Santa Rita Teachers Association. Thank you. Um, I don't see anybody present um, from CSEA, um, so I'm going to go on to 3.2, report from school principals, directors, or departments. Um, Tim, if you could uh, indicate to people the order that you want them to speak in. Sure. We'll start with uh, Chuck Helm. I'll call him, uh, you know, social distancing on his back porch there. <laughs> yes, yes, social distancing. You know, a one-year-old and a five-year-old in the house, this is the quietest place I have right now. Uh, so, yeah, well, good evening, everybody, um, from, our, from our department. So just a, a heads up, we're down to about 2,800 meals a day, um, 1,400 breakfasts, 1,400 lunches. Um, as of 5-1, we were no longer able to get groceries from the food bank. Um, they they needed to redirect their their supplies and their time to their distribution center, which was was bittersweet. Um, we enjoyed giving those out, and I think the community enjoyed it as well. There is a distribution center behind the church that's right next to MOT, so they are still distributing in our area, which is nice. Um, and the last few weeks, they've also given us some some free food. So we've been able to hand out bags of oranges, um, salad mix. Today we gave out clamshells of blueberries. So we've still been able to get something, just not the grocery. Um, this week I attended a webinar with the CDE. We kind of they were discussing kind of how things are going to look for the summertime and possibly into next year. Um, that, was the, that was the basis for the webinar. There wasn't a lot of discussion about that, to be honest with you. It was basically they're just waiting to find out what the USDA is going to do. Um, they've applied for, for waivers for certain things, but as of now, we don't know what's going to happen come July 1 as far as feeding how we're going to be able to feed, if we're going to be able to feed, and what those programs will look like. But we are set up to feed all the way until June 30th. Um, another part of that webinar was what, what they're calling pandemic EBT. Um, and so those are EBT cards that can go out to families who qualify for free and reduced meals. The way they're going to do that is they're starting with um, directly certified students. Um, after that, because we're a provision two district, so all of our students eat for free, whether they qualify for that or not. And they said to hold off on, on really making any kind of announcements, but what, what they're hoping is that all the cards will have reached the families that they know of by May 22nd. After that, if there are families that have not received them, then they can, then they can apply for them. Um, so we can definitely get that information out onto our website and and help the families apply. We can't apply ourselves for them, but uh, we can help them as far as giving them the access to the, the links and the access to the applications. Um, the other thing as far as summertime, um, we have, I took a look at our staff and asked them if they'd be willing and able to work during the summer. As you know, most of our staff is 10 month employees. So come May 28th, that's their last work day contract wise, but we've got a really good response. And um, I think the first two weeks of June, we have about 18 people in our department that are, are willing and able to work. Third week of June, it goes, drops down to about 15 people. And then the fourth week, 14 people and so on. So as the summer goes a little further along, we, we lose some people and, and they're not, they want to take some time off. but. In terms of feeding through June, I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. I, I anticipate the, the counts either maintaining what there are now or dropping a little bit. With slowly, as things kind of open up, people might start taking off, and uh, we may we may see lower counts, which minimal staff would be adequate to to serve that. So that's all for me for now. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, and then uh, Zamudio would oh, go ahead. Uh, Chuck, I just want to commend you and the entire food operations. Um, you weren't here last time, but I just want to say to you, uh, it's commendable 
what you guys are doing and making sure our community is fed. You know, we are a community school district and each school is a community school, you know, and you're providing the vital services out there. So continue the great job that you're doing. I mean, you know, it's all pluses on this side, you know, um, maybe I'm not sure, maybe the board, we can talk about July, you know, at some point, but, uh, you know, whatever continuation we can do uh, to support uh, the community. So thank you Chuck, and to the rest of the gang. Yeah. Thank you, Neil. Um, Rosa. Hi, everyone. So in regards to my business or to the business department, we're pretty much working on uh, making sure everything still, you know, running, running smoothly, like accounts payable, payroll, and everything that we usually do. At this time of the year, we're ready, getting ready to get prepared for the next year budget. There's a lot of work behind the scenes that we do in the financial system, like we want to make sure that all positions roll forward to the next year accurately, the assignments and um, all of our payroll is accurate. So there's a lot of things and that we have to work kind of like behind the scenes to get the budget ready for next year. I did send down an email, I believe it was about two days ago, in regards to the next uh, budget that's coming up, the May revised budget presented by Capital Advisors. It's going to be on May 19 from 2 to 4. I send out emails to all the board members and to the both um, union presidents. If anyone would like to join, this is probably going to be one of the most important budgets from all of this time. Uh, we're going to get pretty much a draft of how the budget is going to look for the next year. And most likely, we're going to get a revised uh, budget maybe in August once the state collects all the money from income um, taxes. So if you're interested, uh, please make sure to reply to my email so I can sign your name. Um, and on that budget, you get the opportunity to ask any questions. And if you have any questions after that uh, workshop, I'll be available as well. So we can talk about any questions or concerns. One of the good news that I have for you with all this craziness about COVID-19 is that we finalized our P2 ADA. And very good news that our 88 percentage came up to a 96% compared to last year, it was a 94%. And I know I give you a little bit more details on the Friday letter. That makes a huge difference when it comes to our revenue or LCFF revenue mainly. Um, I did share those numbers with you. It's about $750,000. So I'm just so happy about that. And this is going to be reflected in the July 1st budget again. And um, you're going to see that change on our next budget. So um, I'm available for any questions you might have. Thank you, Rosa. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I, I just have a clue. I just want to commend our business department and, you know, and the entire staff. But this was something we, 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 we strove for. I think, Tim, you brought this back, I think, about a year ago, where, you know, we did really need to work on ADA and how do we get those other students to check in and make sure they're, uh, you know, learning and coming to school. So, you know, this was something that took over, I think, a year to two years to build on. So I just want to commend you and the staff. Thanks, Neil. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, we really did know very little enforcement. I don't think there were any referrals to the district attorney's office or any of that. It was simply that new attendance software, that new attendance program that was sending out the automated letters. And just that alone, without any follow-up, brought us up two percentage points uh, in, a, in a district our size. You're talking about seven or eight hundred thousand uh, dollars. You know, so we're. Uh, you know, we're pretty happy with that. Uh, that paid for itself and then some, so we'll keep doing it. All right, um, Victor, let's let's talk some good. Good evening to everybody. Um, MOT continues to um, work on essential duties um, until we have the shelter in place lifted. Um, facilities is now continue to remediate the mold issue that we do have at the district office. We're hoping to have clearances and uh, a good report by the end of next week. After that, we could start 
and continue doing the refinishing of the of the walls that were affected. Um, we're also almost done with the three portables at Santa Rita. We're installing the fire alarm system in the next few weeks, and we should be up and running here, in, I would say, in about three weeks. So uh, that's a good thing. We were able to kind of save on our budgets solely because there was a lot of contractors without work, and we multi-primed the, the project. So other than that, um, that's it for me. Thank you, Victor. Any questions for Victor? Okay. Uh, Nate? Wait, I have one. Oh, Sorry, I, need to, I needed to turn my mic on. Um, Victor, once we get past the mold at the district office, is there anything else that's really an emergency out there that potentially absolutely has to be done if we're going to open regular school in August? No, um, we, we kind of met with uh, Tim and Melissa, kind of looked at all of the options that we had on the table. And so we did do bare minimum just to remediate the issue on the east wall. And the east wall was the, the one that was causing most of the problems to the entire building. Other than that, once we do that, uh, I, I think we're going to be OK. Uh, the roof could probably last another year or so. But that's probably the next issue that we're going to be uh, having to having to do. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, Victor. I think Sarah was just asking in general, like after <clears throat> outside of the district office, moving through the summer, and we had this conversation uh, day before yesterday as well. So if you could just uh, talk to her about that as far as what's going on this summer, um, and, and just kind of catch her up on where we're at with that. Well, once, once the shelter in place is lifted, uh, we'll be able to do most of the <clears throat> preventative uh, maintenance. Right now, because of the uh, shelter in place, we can only do essential items in order to maintain teachers' connectivity, uh, you know, like changing out filters, uh, the grounds are being mowed, so we, to alleviate, you know, the, the, uh, the mice, the ticks, and stuff like that in every one of our campus. But I think once it's once the shelter in place is lifted, we'll be able to do the deep cleaning for the summer. We'll do that again. We'll have um, disinfecting of the classrooms like we did uh, when COVID-19 started. Um, and we'll be able to kind of have everything ready. But I, I don't see I don't foresee any hiccups in order to start in August. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think it was Monday when we met, or was it Tuesday, Victor? But um, I, I told him at that time, we're going to freeze all projects moving forward into this, you know, with this budget crisis the way it is. So uh, everything that we had uh, on schedule, unless it's uh, something like this where it's an absolute, we have to deal with it, uh, those are all being frozen. Uh, we're, we're in a spending freeze for, for any kind of facilities work, unless it poses any kind of health, safety, or welfare kind of thing. Other than that, uh, it's just going to be people doing their cleanings and, and deep cleanings and, and maintenance. So and it'll be a good chance for us to get caught up, too. So, Thank you. Sure. Uh, Nadine. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have uh, from the SPED side of my uh, role to uh, just want to do a quick up. We're doing lots of transition meetings right now. Uh, it's required to have a transition meeting from any student going from preschool to elementary, elementary to middle, or middle to high school. So um, there's a lot of work going on with transition meetings. And because we put some meetings um, on hold and did not have meetings from March 13th through March 31st, those have had to be rescheduled. But overall, case managers are doing an amazing job. We're getting it done. Peter Fleming and myself have been providing coverage for IEPs so that none of them have to be rescheduled. So between site principals uh, and site managers and vice principals and Peter and myself, we've been able to move forward and we're almost there. By the end of this week, the bulk of our transition meetings will be done and we'll have just a couple stragglers to, to finish up. Um, and then um, I'm gonna start working. I already have started doing some early stages of planning for extended school year. Uh, we have determined the dates and the number of days. I did also a consultation with legal just because of the circumstances and because of, of SPED being a very sensitive area and providing um, access for students with disabilities. Uh, so we will run a 20-day program 
It will start on June 3rd and it will run through June 30th. Um, the plan is to create, it will, it will be a distance learning model. Um, I will provide uh, families with a prior written notice describing that model. And uh, we will do the instructional piece as well as the related services to include um, speech and occupational therapy. The time frame of the day is what I will be working on with my fellow administrators as well as the, the teachers who will be working in that program because we know you can't have kids sitting looking at a computer for five hours. It's, it's very different than being in a classroom and doing activities. And I, I think we're all a little sad that we can't do what we did last year because it was so great to have Summer Academy and ESY run side by side on the same campus. Our students with disabilities had the same access to the enrichment activities that uh, general ed students had. So sadly, we're not gonna be able to do that and that's okay. And we're gonna move forward and do the best job that we can for our students and provide that support for them um, over the summer. Um, so I'll be working a little deeper into those details next week. We'll be reaching out to the families um, whose students qualify or have been uh, qualified to attend ESY. Uh, it usually starts with um, Amy, uh, Amy Lopez, uh, the administrative assistant in my department, she'll give every single family a personal phone call. And if they would like to participate, we will mail them a registration form so that we have record of them uh, confirming that they would like to attend, as well as we will include the prior written notice to the family describing the this program. Um, on the student services side, uh, counselors and our, our school counselors and school psychologists have been working closely together to really monitor and check in with families under the stressful times. And we saw a very high level of stress and concern and anxiety in March. And then we saw it tick down a little bit and now we're seeing it come back up. And we think that it has, uh, like uh, Chuck described the um, you know, the lessening of uh, fewer meals going out. I think we, we think you know, in mid-March, families had paid their rent when COVID-19 shelter-in-place happened. They had a little bit of savings to pay their April rent, and now it's May, and they don't have the supports that they need. So the counselors and the psychologists also pitch in, reaching out, connecting with families. How can we help you? What resources can we get connected to? Um, they're really doing a great job. We also have been working closely with Dr. Donna Smith at MCOE, who's the homeless uh, liaison. We've had some students we have not been able to locate and we're very concerned about that. So we have reached out to her. She has access to communicate with all of the local homeless shelters to see if any of these families have um, appeared at these shelters. And we also, if we're not able to locate them, if we can find out if they're sharing a home, something like that, we can always um, reach out and have Officer Lopez and, or Officer Sanchez do a wellness check on those families and, and also get them connected with resources in that manner as well. Um, the last piece, um, I continue to do work with school innovation and achievements and on, uh, with our attendance uh, A2A program. Uh, and this last one, I pulled Nicole Jensen in with me. So um, as you know, A2A supports us and with attendance and making sure we get students to maximize attendance and understand the importance of being at school. And they help us with letters and notifying parents when there's an attendance problem to set up meetings, um, to mediate and help and get school uh, students in attendance as regularly as possible. Because we're not doing truancy letters, they are supplanting that with other letters. So they have done um, a COVID-19 letter they did for us when this first started, which were tips and helpful hints for families. Um, now, there, we're going to do a letter to families where students have, in, have, only, have checked in to distance learning five or less times. Um, and that will just be a record for us as a school district. Like this student had not signed in, didn't check in, just helps us keep some records that those students may need some more support when we come back in for August. Um, and also just have record that, that we've reached out to those families and trying to locate them um, and encourage them to engage in distance learning. And then I also will, hope, I hope to be working with A2A. They will also help us with generating some communication and they can do it very quickly regarding our new online registration system. 
And I've been working with uh, Melissa Alderman on that to develop a letter. And it's a very efficient and effective way for us to get communications to families. We've had some families engaging in the registration process, but a letter like this going out sometime before mid-June will be helpful to them in explaining the process. And then also provide them with the contact information if they're having problems with that. Are there any questions? Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Moore. Okay. Um, well, as Rosa mentioned, um, HR and business are working closely together for the rollover to the new year, and um, that has involved um, our HR specialist and, um, oh my gosh, the manager and payroll specialist or technician to be working really closely, um, verifying that the salary schedules are entered correctly. The calendars are entered correctly. They're checking each other's work to make sure that everything is accurate as we move into the new year. And that's going to be really helpful with our assignments um, and position control. So I'm grateful for that collaboration. Um, our teacher contracts were all mailed out and we're receiving those back, answering any questions that come up regarding um, probationary status and tenure. And so at our next meeting, um, later in May, I will have the probationary list for all of you to see who our probationary teachers will be for next year. Um, and we're looking forward to giving tenure to several teachers in the 2021 school year. Um, we are also finalizing our staffing. We're getting to the point where we have very few positions left um, that we will be filling, particularly with special education and um, a music position. Um, and on that note, there is a virtual teacher recruitment fair tomorrow that MCOE is hosting. And so that's going to be my first experience doing a virtual teacher fair. I got to go on a webinar today to see exactly how it works. I've been setting up my booth with Nicole's help. Um, and so that's going to be really interesting and exciting. So that's happening tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. You got this. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, um, Melissa Alderman. Hi everybody, I've been doing um, lots of things um, and working to kind of close out this school year uh, while not being quite sure what next school year will look like. Uh, with that said, normally about this time of year, I would start reading a few drafts of a document called the LCAP. And we are, and there's no draft of an LCAP to give you yet. So I wanted to give you an update. What I will be giving you instead, um, the state has come out, uh, Rosa and I talked about it today. It's called an operations written report. Um, so that will be coming to you, um, if not the next board meeting, the first one in June for you to approve. It's basically a document that outlines, it highlights what we're doing right now during COVID-19, our distance learning plan, um, things that we may have diverted funding um, from the LCAP to cover uh, to deal with COVID. Basically, it's the last quarter of our school year. So our wonderful activities, field trips, um, after school tutoring, uh, those kinds of things for the whole last quarter weren't able to take place. But I mean, things did and so we needed to access those fundings the state allowed us to do so and now we'll present a plan that indicates what we what we did instead of what our original LCAP plan had been the new date um, for our finalized LCAP is December 15th I don't anticipate us needing to go um, quite that late unless um, something very strange with uh, the budget comes in which yeah, but um, that we should be able to get something to you even earlier in the fall. Um, basically, once Rosa and I know what our budget's going to look like, and she can tell me what our LCAP is going to look like, um, we can get that document in place, go back to that input. We had great stakeholder input. <coughs> Um, and so it was another year that um, we had great attendance at our LCAP meetings. Rosa um, attended. She, she ran the, our last one in Spanish while I ran simultaneously in English. And we really laid out budget priorities. So we got a lot of the heavy work done. 
at that last big LCAP meeting that we had, and then we couldn't have our March one and so forth. So um, that's kind of where we're at with that. So you should be seeing that document come through pretty soon. And it really highlights some of the, the safety materials that we've done, the materials that we needed for our paper packets, um, different online access to tools, and things like that that we've um, needed to use those LCAP funds for. Wanted to let you know, I know student safety and, and all of that is super important. Um, Nicole's IT team, who Sam brought to her a, um, a product, it's a, it's a box that sanitizes Chromebooks. And so we looked at funding and we're gonna obtain some of those for our sites and our district office so that um, our IT team, as they handle these incoming Chromebooks from our students, can actually place them in this device that will sanitize them um, using UV light. And we felt like that was worth the worth the price for us having and because they'll be used long after um, this incident. So I wanted to thank Hussam Ibrahim for finding that and sending it our way. And we ended up just finally calling him so we weren't texting back and forth. And so um, Nicole's working on getting those in place um, for our team when they start collecting Chromebooks back and we need to get them ready to deploy for our incoming students safely. Uh, because we're not going to be able to do the amazing um, Dynamic Summer Academy that we had last year, which Nadine mentioned, and um, what I have done is I'm working with principals and getting them to solicit from their teachers if grade level teams wanted to secure different materials for um, their incoming students to have over the summer. So um, I just bought a book for Santa Rita's. Um, I, I told Sheila McNeese her team won for being the first one um, to let me know what they wanted. So for her incoming, um, the incoming grade level students, a book for each of her incoming kinders and some other that they asked for for the students to have over the summer so that when they come back in the fall, however that looks, the students will have the book and the teachers can start there. So our middle school teachers are looking at what they might want to do if it's a novel or a workbook or something like that. Um, just so students are keeping in touch with their skills so when they come back they're ready to roll. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Okay, Tim, are you ready for me to go on to board reports? Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Mattel, I'm going to start with you. Anything to report? You know, over the past few weeks, I've been getting a number of phone calls from concerned parents uh, regarding distant learning. A lot of them are frustrated. <laughs> you know, they want to get back to normal as possible. Uh, they want to know when the schools are going to open, you know, what kind of situation we're going to be in distant learning, are you going to have, you know, a day program and an afternoon program, whatever the case may be, you know, the, the truth is we don't know. And so my answer to all of them is always the same that, uh, you know, we always look at two things. Number one is always safety, 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 in terms of making sure that we're following all guide guidelines. And the second thing is, you know, we always want to have, make sure the parents in the community have input, you know, in, into what they would like, have a voice, you know, so, Hopefully between those two, you know, we can find common solutions, but uh, these are stressful times for parents as well as staff and the community. But, uh, you know, I, I, those two things are always on the forefront uh, of, our, of my mind. It's always safety and how do we get students as fast as we can back into the classroom. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hargi Saldana? Um, at this point, I have uh, nothing to report, um, but I do want to commend everybody, uh, say thank you for all the hard work and effort that is going on um, regarding, you know, having to plan something that is hard to plan because we don't know what it looks like. Um, so thank you, everybody, for all your commitment and effort. Thank you. Uh, Jacob Sandoval? Uh, nothing too much. We drive around the schools just when there's meals being handed out. So it's really exciting to see our staff out there you know, taking leadership role and supporting our community. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Arellano? I have nothing to report other than 
to say we are going through real tough times and uh, you all are doing an excellent, great job. So thank you for that. That's it. Thank you. Um, my own report, I've been getting a lot of phone calls from teachers um, with just concerns about what's going to happen going forward and then just concerns about things that, that they're experiencing, um, you know, especially with families that have sort of disconnected from school, you know. Um, so everybody's doing the best they can. I really commend the staff. It's just there's some things that are out of our control right now. Um, I going forward, um, especially for the two schools that are going to have new principals in the fall. Um, I think like come July one, we're going to need to really like do some work on that because it's it's hard to take over as principal under normal circumstances, and especially if we're in abnormal circumstances. I think it's um, even more so, and I know that we're um, we're really talking about being fiscally responsible with money, which I appreciate. But I'm also wondering with the two schools with the new principals, if we need to designate some money in the summer for teams to get together um, early before the regular calendar to talk about what's going on, because there's a difference of continuing what you are already doing as opposed to having a new person come in um, and who may not, who doesn't, who may not have a model of what you were doing before. So I don't know that that's something they can talk to the other administrators, but they really need to hear it from like the boots on the ground people in terms of what the issues are and just, Anything that we can do to facilitate that transition, I would really appreciate. That's the end of my personal report. Okay, uh, moving on to Tim. Um, the, uh, I agree, Karen, with your last point, and um, you know, uh, spoke with uh, Jill Lutz, the SRTA president, yesterday afternoon. Uh, she uh, sent us, uh, and I think you're gonna comment on it in 7.1 uh we're gonna we're gonna go through this and we uh we are having a principals meetings and currently um both of those principals i i know i was on one last week and i saw the the principal that's coming from gonzalez uh and also uh, our internal candidate we're both on those meetings so they have been setting in on the principals meetings and transitioning in already uh they'll probably be reaching out to staff uh, you know, as soon as things, you know, settle down and, and everybody's not so crazy. Um, just a couple of things uh, for the summer that's coming up. I uh, was on a conference call with the county superintendents and Dr. Moreno uh, about summer camps and summer programs and uh, the amount of um, the amount of uh, conditions that were being placed on those basically made it untenable for us to have uh, our summer uh, academy and also Girls Inc. Um, I've, I've, I have uh, had an email exchange with Girls Inc. and let them know one of the conditions that they made was that there was no two week camps. They all had to be four weeks uh, because they didn't want them going from one camp to another. Uh, they wanted to make sure that they were, I don't know that they do that, but they were, that was the main concern. There was all, uh, uh, several others, but that was the one. So. Uh, and then also with regards to migrant education, uh, that program is going to be all remote as well. So they're not going to, we're not going to have any summer camps or summer programs on campus physically uh, this summer. Um, the, uh, the only other thing I can think of right now is just to, to, to reassure uh, everyone that right now the main thing we're waiting on for uh, to, to be able to start planning and, and pushing out information, there's two major conditions. Uh, the budget obviously is one. Uh, there's a, there's two conversations going on in Sacramento right now, and I haven't heard if there's been a decision. I know they talked about it yesterday. I haven't heard anything today. One is uh, enrollment versus ADA. So if there is a, if there is going to be a, a, a year where they do away with ADA and just go back to an old enrollment style because there's a good chance that we're going to, if we do come back in the fall, 
there's a very good possibility we're going to see a rebound and you would have to go back. And uh, tracking ADA and that kind of system where you're on again, off again, would be impossible. So they're talking about that. The other thing that's really critical is they're talking about holding harmless on instructional minutes. And until that issue is resolved, I'm not sure. I mean, it really would, we'd have to create probably four different kind of models. And that's, uh, I think everybody's got enough on their plate right now that trying to, you know, figure out four different ways to, uh, to be able to come back in the fall. But I mean, a, a lot of the conditions they're talking about for us to open up in the fall, we've got to work through because they're not, they're not all that realistic. Um, so we're, we're going to, uh, we're going to work through those, but we'll be reaching out, uh, to uh, the unions, uh, we'll, we'll set a we'll set a, uh, a team together and bring people. We'll need we'll need MOT in it. We'll need food services. We'll need teachers. We'll need classified uh, principals. So we we'll, we will have those conversations. We'll we'll formulate a steering committee to start putting some things together. And we'll have some we'll have some more because the nineteenth is the budget meeting and they should have some uh, answers on us on those other two issues as well. So hopefully you know when that happens next week. Uh, we'll be able to start addressing that and getting some information out. We'll start putting some uh, letters out to some communication out to parents through email, phone calls, letters, uh, letting them know as well. So they know that we are, we are working on it and that we'll be uh, looking for them as well to give us input uh, through either surveys or, or, or phone calls. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to come up with something that's going to keep students safe uh, and still get us back into school as quickly as we can. So um, we'll take care of it as fast as we can, but as safely as we can. So that's all I've got, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm going on to 3.5, which is uh, receive hearings of individuals desiring to address the board on actions that are not on the agenda. We did receive a public comment uh, regarding 7.1, which I'm going to read when we get to 7.1, but. Um, is anybody aware of any public comment that was emailed to the district or contact in any other way uh, regarding items not on the agenda? Sarah, this is Nicole. I do have a couple of comments that's come that have come into the public comment email. One, um, are, are they in regard to 7.1, the board uh, potential board policies on distance learning, or are they on other things? One is on the West area specific plan. Um, and then there's some others. If you could read that one now, I would appreciate it. And then there's another one regarding mold over at La Jolla in room 24. Okay, yeah, it, but, uh, both of those. So anything that's not on the agenda, if you, could, if you wouldn't mind reading it to the board. Okay, and then there are a couple others and I think they're related to 7.1, so. Uh, this one on the West Area Specific Development and Lawsuit is from Danny Crouch. She says, Dear ladies and gentlemen of the board, my name is Danny Crouch, a teacher at La Jolla Elementary. I have a few questions for you in regards to the West Area Specific Plan. What, if I may ask, is the latest development on the district's lawsuit against the city? I believe they were due to have a response to you by the end of April. Did they respond? Has the closures related to COVID-19 postponed the lawsuit or the timelines related to the development? Was our district guaranteed the money talked about previously to build the first school or will the state's budget cuts risk us losing that money? I realize you might not have these answers tonight, but I would appreciate any information you might have in relation to this issue relevant to the future of our district. Thank you. Um, I can quickly comment on the, where we're at in the in the lawsuit, and then I'll call her tomorrow and touch base with her on all those other questions on the funding because uh, I'll have to call uh, our, our attorney. The, the, the she's right. The COVID nineteen has pushed the timeline back because the courts weren't even open to do filings for almost a month, and they have to do everything remotely. So right now. We have placed we have placed a, a, an offer into the developers for consideration, and it's still under consideration at this time. Um, uh, we are also in talks with uh, the family uh, that owns the Sobrano family uh, that owns that property, and um, uh, but we're still waiting because of the uncertainty of the budget. We have to wait on that as well, and then I will reach out and, and call her tomorrow 
and and just and try to walk through all the other issues that she was talking about after I find out some answers. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Nicole, Nicole, can you read the next letter? Yes. Uh, this is from Jill Lutz. Uh, says, we're concerned that the infamous room 24, the sick room at La Jolla was not mentioned in the mold report, the report on mold. Can we assume that that room will be replaced before students or teachers will be assigned to this room until, or excuse me, will not be assigned to this room until the problem is fixed? And then she says, by the way, there are 55 teachers watching remotely and safely the board meeting tonight. Thanks. And then when um, we get to 7.1, there are some others related to that, I think. So. Okay. Well, if you, if you could hold them until we get down yes. to 7.1. Okay. And um, Tim or Victor, are we aware of the La Jolla situation? Yeah, that room was tested and, and came back negative for mold. There's, there's not a mold. And uh, there was a HEPA filter put on and an air circulation unit put on that a year ago. Yeah. Um, as far as replacement, we have them looking into it, but if we can't find the funding, I don't know how we're going to pay for it with the budget the way it is. Uh, we did replace the carpet, I believe. I'm going to let Victor take the uh, mitigation steps that we took. So, Victor, if you could address that, what were the things that were done in that room specifically? So, basically, what we did is an air quality report, and it was done by Keenan directly. So, the hygienist came out and he did all the readings and he did three readings on 24 and then 25, which is the portable right next door to which uh, gutters were installed. And uh, like you said, a new circulation unit was put in to room 24. Um, we went in there and uh, earlier about three weeks ago or two weeks ago and just kind of assessed on where it's at. Um, Honestly, the portable is antiquated. It is an old Aurora building. It could be um, replaced if we did find the funding. Um, it is sitting on directly on dirt, which is not really recommended. However, you know, under the circumstances, it's got uh, metal basically se separating the ground from from the uh, the subfloor. So right now it has some uneven settling, which is kind of, um, it, it, it doesn't cause any tripping hazards because it's no greater than 2%, but um, eventually uh, it definitely needs to be replaced. Thank you. Yeah, we're looking into that. Uh, and, and I know that, um, when I was over there three weeks ago with Victor, I told him to look into, uh, with our new uh, funding uh, people, to look and see if there's any way we can get some uh, some hardship, some, you know, uh, they used to call it critical hardship. I'm not sure what it's called now, but it's an emergency funding for replacement on that building, so. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to go on to, 4.1 approve annual review of Central Coast co-op agreement for school year 2021. Yeah, so this is uh, with our Central Coast co-op. It's a local co-op co um, purchasing cooperative, cooperative that has about 12 to 13 local districts and something we do every year the major change to this one was the lead district determined that with all the work they do with the bid process it used to be a, an annual fee of fifty dollars uh, there's about five bids five to six bids that they do the workforce determined that um, they were going to they were going to amend the contract and do fifty dollars per bid so that's the only real change there so it's i think it's uh, i think it says up to 250 dollars if we participate in all five bids. Are there any questions about this? Okay, can I have a motion? Motion to approve. Adele. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 5-0. Okay, going on to 5.1, consider approval of revised district calendar for 2020-2021. Okay. 
Unfortunately, when we presented our first calendar to you, we had made an error in our placement of Memorial Day um, and placed it where it fell this year instead of looking ahead. And so that's been corrected, as well as just um, stating start and end dates in the notes underneath the calendar for various classifications within the school district. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Zelda. I am Fado second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 5-0. Thank you. Um, going on to 5.2, consider approval of board resolution 20.05.51, National National Teacher Appreciation Week, which is May 4th through the 8th, 2020. This is an annual resolution to recognize the work that our teachers do for our students. And I did see um, a lot of what our principals led as far as teacher appreciation gestures. Um, so that was great to see last week. So this is a resolution to acknowledge our teachers. Um, and you have it there in the agenda if you're interested in reading it. Um, I, I know personally how incredibly hard it is, as do, you know, all of you, so, um, I'm just incredibly grateful for everybody, thing that everyone's doing, especially at this crazy time when your job is not at all what you were trained for, but something that you're having to, um, completely learn on the fly. So I don't know if anybody else has something they wanted to share or, um, at some point a motion. You know, Sarah, I totally agree with you. I think knowing that we have a vast majority of our board as teachers right now, and you know, we're in this fight together, and I just want to commend all teachers out there. I um, Ambato, I agree. Um, um, these are definitely um, new charter territories for all of us, um, and um, and I know. You know that personally so many teachers are putting hours beyond their um, work day and and um, in trying to keep in touch and contact the families and i know that a, a, a priority is academically but i know that a lot of teachers have been extending themselves to make sure that these families are safe and uh um emotionally um well and what have you and i know that the district is supporting our teachers with that so uh thank you okay well, can I, thank you Ms. Rattata, motion to approve i second that all in favor all right, all right. passes by zero thank you and then we're going to go on to uh, 5.3, consider approval of board resolution 20.05.52, classified school employee week, uh, May 17th to the 23rd, 2020. And again, with our unusual circumstances, I know food service, maintenance, there's so many people, secretaries that are going above and beyond. Um, I know the dedication they bring on a daily basis, but again, it's doing a job that you, that was not your job six months ago. So I'm, I'm really impressed. I make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And again, thank you to our amazing employees and please, you know, continue, continue to pass on the district's appreciation of everything that they do. Um, I'm going to go down to 7.1 uh, board policy 4113.5, uh, 4213.5, 4313.5, working remotely board policy 6157, distance learning. And again, this is just first read. They are not, it is not being adopted as, um, 
as written this evening, we're going to continue to have discussions. And then even if and when whatever is adopted by the board, the, um, the unions do have the right to bargain the effects of anything that that we adopt. You know, we can set our policies as we choose, and then they can choose to demand to bargain the effects if they feel like there's a change in working conditions. I'm going to um, read a public comment that was set in by Jill Lutz, and then Nicole Jensen, if you could read any others after that before we um, discuss. So it says, Dear trustee, public comment from SRTA regarding agenda item 7.1. SRTA respectfully requests that this item be tabled from tonight's agenda. The union objects to the policies to the extent that the policies purport to permit the district, its superintendent, and other administrators to act in violation of the signed contract agreement and the union's rights under EERA. Among but not limited to our concerns are Changes in our working conditions, wages, and benefits must be bargained with us as a union and cannot be unilaterally imposed upon us. This is the law. These policies could allow for unilaterally implementing changes to our working conditions without bargaining. There are no standards for who may request working remotely, how the request would be evaluated, nor any way to contest the denial of the request to work remotely. The policy leaves open the possibility that compensation benefits or other terms and conditions of employment might be changed for employees working remotely, allows the superintendent to change hours of work, requires employees to keep track of hours worked, concern over discipline and evaluation procedures. The policy does not provide for actual bargaining. Nothing is said about how or when training is to be provided, whether teachers are to be paid for training, the requirement that teachers provide regular communications with students or parents might affect the hours of work beyond regular work hours. The SRTA wants to be our partner as we face the challenges of the new school year. We want to work collaboratively, collaboratively with you to implement what will be potentially a whole new learning paradigm. These policies do not move us towards achieving a unified approach towards making student success our greatest priority. Respectfully submitted, Jill Lutz, President SRTA, and Kate Stover, Lead Negotiator SRTA. Um, Nicole, if, if you have other letters, if you wouldn't mind reading them aloud at this point. Yeah, I have two emails, and then there's several pictures that were sent in of teachers wearing their red. Um, I don't know if you want those shared with the board. I can definitely share those later on. Uh, first comment is from Margie Kirchen. She says, Dear Santa Rita Union School District Board members, I am a first grade teacher at La Jolla Elementary School and have been for 25 years. I am writing to express my alarm at a clause inside your policy guidelines for working remotely. This clause appears to give teachers no recourse if we are placed in an unsafe situation with regards to working at the school sites while a pandemic is spreading exponentially. Not enough tests are available. Contact tracing has not been implemented in any, in any meaningful way, and there does not appear to be a vaccine in sight for at least 18 months. The opportunity to work remotely shall be entirely at the district's discretion, and no grievance or appeal right may arise from district denial of any employee request for remote work. Page 40 of the Santa Rita Union School District Board Agenda notes regarding policy guides for working remotely. I am writing to fervently recommend removing this clause from the policy guides and instead include language that ensures teacher, staff, and student safety. In conclusion, I must emphasize that this policy item should be removed and the issues revolving around working remotely should be bargained. Sincerely, Margie Kirchen, La Jolla Elementary. And then the other one I have is from Karen Yoder at New Republic. She says, I would like to inform you that I support SRTA's initiative for distance learning and remote work. I strongly feel the more details that can be decided on beforehand, the smoother next year will be. I also feel that safety is essential. Thank you, Karen Yoder. So those are the two comments. Thank you. And Nicole, if, if 
at the conclusion of the meeting, if you wouldn't mind forwarding the pictures to the board, I would appreciate it. I mean, even if it's just somebody wearing their t-shirt, they took the time out because they wanted us to know that the union's concerned about it. And so I, I would appreciate it if you'd share those with us. I will do that. Thank you. Um, again, I want to say this is just a first read. This is not an implementation of this. There are, um, there's some concerns that I have that I think I'd like to, to pick apart and um, looking at different options um, that we have. One of my concerns has to do with the fact that we don't have good um, direction from the state or the county about what the fall is supposed to look like at this point. And I think that um, once we have that, I think it, it will assuage a lot of people in terms of sort of saying like, this is policy A, this is how it's going to be implemented, right? You know, because right now we don't have an implementation plan because we don't know um, what it's gonna look like. And just to, um, as an example of what I'm talking about, if you're trying to serve children that are physically in front of you and teach remotely at the same time. There are only so many hours in the day and we need to be respectful of what's our ex um, expectation in regards to people's time. Um, and there are absolutely, we have con contractual language in regards to that, but things happen in terms of if you're teaching your child at your house and they have a meeting that you so, you know, with, with their teacher, then how do you accommodate that with other things going on in your classroom? So. I feel like um, I understand why people are anxious just because I'm anxious about my own work environment. So the more information that we can get out, the better. So, uh, but I appreciate this being brought forward because we're gonna, ultimately we're gonna have to do something. And so we need to, you know, start the discussion about um, what it is. So uh, I'd like to hear other people's comments. Um, Sarah, I absolutely agree with you. I think, you know, as a teacher myself, I have major concerns about, you know, how the impact on the teacher schedule, work conditions, etc. But this is a process, and this is a process we must follow. I welcome the uh, the comments from the teachers and anybody else that as we as we move through this process, we can make adjustments. We believe in good faith bargaining at this district, you know, so. You know, for me, it, it, like I said, it, it's something that we will be working together on, but we need to start moving forward, you know, and, and getting the policies in place. So thank you. You may, you may do support for 10.1 to move forward so we can get the second reading uh, next time around. So I had a question, I guess, as far as uh, Anderson, this is the first reading. Yes. And this is the process to potentially modify the, the, the guideline or the policy get in but what would be the next step on the next reading any modifications or we'll do the step here so what well, if, if you'd like i can present the item as i it, it, it's i put that on the agenda it falls on my department so if you'd like me to present it and go through it and then i can it might help um, with mr sandoval's question is that something you'd like me to do typically we present our items and that or do you want to take a different uh, approach um, I'm, I didn't anticipate, per, I mean, I, if you can do a synopsis, I just, it, it's really long and um, that was my only thing that I didn't feel like. There's other times where we've changed policy where it has been, a, you know, sections at a time that are changed. This is really the wholesale adoption of language that we don't have at all and it's a lot of language. Um, I, I really want to hear what you have to say. Um, I just feel like I personally have not done the going through line by line that I, that I want to do to feel comfortable in terms of saying this is what our policy is. Even if it's, you know, people like, well, this is what CSBA has been putting out. I understand that CSBA is putting this out there in crisis mode, just like everybody else is living in crisis mode. And that doesn't mean that that this that everything that they put in there is appropriate is, is basically my concern. Correct. Correct. So I, 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 I agree with that, Sarah. It would be a lengthy, a lengthy process to go through. 
I think we have a second revision coming. I would like to see staff work with the stakeholder groups and modify it, and then we can look at it in the second reading. That, that's yeah. that, that where I can support. Yeah, I agree when Nadine was saying as far as uh, usually the staff will present the item, and in this case, we haven't given the a chance to present why it's been mentioned. Okay. <coughs> so the item that you see tonight is, um, is that's on the background information sheet, which summarizes these are two new policies that, that is correct. These are brand new policies that were created by this California uh, State Board of uh, uh, the California School Board Association, of which provides all school districts with policies. As you know, we did a global adoption earlier this school year in August to redo all policies that were over 12 years old, I believe. So um, all of our policies that currently exist have been updated uh, appropriately through the process that took us quite a while last year, I think about eight months to get through that. So these are two brand new policies. Um, in the state of which you see them, they are intact and complete is the way that they, in, in the form of that they are delivered to us as a school district. That is also the CSBA's role is to provide us with the <coughs> policies. Um, they are uh, fairly thorough and then you have the guide sheet that gives a quick summary as well as the detailed samples that you see that have been provided. Um, all of the policies, the way that they are presented uh, to board, school boards across the state are um, in compliance with labor code, government code, United States code, and, and especially, uh, especially in this one, Title 42, which applies to Americans uh, with Disabilities Act, as well as um, Ed Code, Public Contract Code, United States Code Title 20 regarding internet, uh, internet safety, and United States Code Title 47 which is universal discounts, also known as E-rate, as well as internet safety. So the policies that the samples that you see this evening are compliant with all of those government codes um, and ed codes and so on and so forth. And those are found on the last page where they list the legal reference as well as management sources. So all of that was included in this document for the public to be able to view that and see that. And in terms of revisions that may be done, there, they can be done. Of course, they can be done. Any policy can be revised. The important thing to keep in mind as we work through this process is that they're presented to us in a way that's legally compliant with all codes. If any policy um, is edited outside of the recommendations from the CSBA, it is um, it would be in the best interest to have legal review that policy post revision to make sure that it remains compliant with health and safety codes, labor codes, ed codes, all of the all of the code words um, that we have to look at when um, you're dealing with policy. So that would be my, my only recommendation for the board as we work through this. And if there are over, uh, um, if there are edits done to the document, they should be reviewed um, by the legal to make sure that everybody is protected as we move through this process. Are there any questions from, from the board that I can answer for you? You know, Nadine, I really appreciate the, the, providing this information. So we have a framework where our, our admin and the various stakeholder groups can work from. So I think once we do move forward with uh, uh, after the second revision, well, I'm sure we'll have edits in there. Uh, but as far as getting a first framework out, out there and, you know, for, for, for people to start discussing from and make edits too, I think we should move forward. I just want to, just real quick, I just want I, I talked with Jill about this, uh, Jill Lutz, the president of SRTA last night, and we have an MOU uh, in place that's in effect uh, that addresses, uh, you know, our working conditions currently, and right now that's what we're governed by. Uh, we're not, uh, you know, like I said, there's only two and a half, three weeks left in this school year. We can take our time to go through this. Uh, I will, uh, you know, once we're done tonight, uh, I'll be reaching out tomorrow to uh, follow up and we can uh, look at these uh, concerns that they have individually and see if there's some way we can negotiate it through the MOU and side letter process 
uh, that will that will you know make everybody feel like there's I mean because it sounds like we have two different issues we have some teachers that don't feel comfortable coming back to school until it's safe we have other other people who are worried about how can I teach uh, my students and have my students and my kids at home so it, it's it's a lot more complex than just one one voice that's saying one thing. So I think it's going to take some time to massage all that to find out. And so then we can set a policy for next fall that will address as many of those concerns as possible. We're all concerned. I have, I have tremendous concerns uh, with the reopen for next year with some of the guidelines that the county health department's given us. And I'll be able to share those with, uh, with, the, with the teachers uh, and starting tomorrow. So. Yeah. And it, for me, um, I don't want to undo the good work that we've done of building unity with the staff and having us all in together by putting people in situations where um, they feel really uncomfortable. It, it may be, I mean, as you guys know, we can't be all things to all people. You know, there's, there's always going to be somebody who, um, but I feel like if we have the opportunity with staff to do things like work through scenarios and just have the opportunity to be transparent about what's going on. A scenario might be, hey, I, I'm concerned about coming back in the fall. And it it may be that the person then has the opportunity to either take that job, like if, if we're back open, then it may be that, you know, they don't have a choice to work remotely if we've got kids here that they they need to teach. But just being honest, with them about about what's going to happen so that people don't feel like hey you know i um it we can, we keep using the word uncertain and it's it's just completely true we're in really uncertain times and um i feel more comfortable at this point um you know just clarifying with people nothing is going to change in in terms of your work conditions in in this last little bit of the month that we have and there will be discussion and people will understand and have clarity by the time we come back in the fall about how things have changed or if they've changed. Thank, thank you, Nadine, for presenting this. So just to clarify, uh, and given that it's a first reading, do we need a motion just to approve that we receive the first reading? Or is it just uh, an informational item? It, it can be just, an, I put it on as approval, but I, it's okay to table it at this point and, and review it. We'll have, the board will have to have some discussions at some point of how you're going to proceed with this policy and what edits or, you know, what it would look like at some point when it comes back. So I think the clarification I need is, are both of these policies um, or getting a first read or an informational item tonight, and are they both being tabled to be reviewed at a later date, or one of them, or so I can take the proper, I need to take the proper actions before the 27th, I guess is what I'm asking. How can let I me, help? How can I me, help? I wanna make this suggestion, Nadine. I, why don't we, can you read the synopsis, the little paragraphs that describe each one as a first reading? I'm, I, I'm not really, in favor of tabling it because I want to go ahead and get into it with the teachers. And I think if we table it, it's likely to get pushed off to the side. I want to, we can do this, do the first reading, but it didn't stop in two weeks. It just means we do the first reading. That way it keeps us in place. Then we can start, I can start working in, in, with uh, with SRTA uh, maybe this week, next week. Sorry about the dog. Uh, but, um, we'll, uh, let's just go ahead and read those synopsis, do a first reading. And then if we need to table it, we can table it the next time. I don't want to table it this time. Okay. So the no. first reading, I will read the summary. Um, in my past experience, and if, Tim, if you'd like me to do something, we typically don't read the policy itself word for word. You'd be at a board meeting all night long. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you yeah, just do the little, just do the description. For the little, pol a policy guide sheet is, yes. is your best yes. friend when you do a policy. So yes, I'm going to read the summary friend. of each one. So in the in the first one, the it's board policy four point or four one one three point five, four two one three point five, four three one three point five, working remotely. New policy addresses issues applicable to employees who work from home or another remote location 
whether due to a school closure resulting from a widespread Ill illness, natural disaster, or other emergency condition, or upon the request of an individual employee. The policy clarifies that there is no entitlement to work remotely and that the employees who are in the ability to work remotely are subject to the same compensation, benefits, or other terms and conditions of employment appropriate for the position. Policy also addresses work hours, work environment, use of district equipment, reimbursement of expenses, safeguarding of district records, evaluation of job performance, and discontinuance of the remote work arrangement at the district's discretion. <coughs> Second policy sample is board policy 6157, distance learning. New policy addresses the provision of distance learning opportunities to students, whether to all students due to a school closure or to individual students or classes as an alternative instructional method for academic purposes. Policy presents examples of the types of distance learning opportunities that may be offered based on the California Department of Education's COVID-19 guidance for K-12 schools. Policy also addresses teacher training and support, availability to all students, use of district equipment, communications with parents and with students and parents slash guardians, and grading criteria. Policy includes additional considerations in the event of a school closure, such as a prioritization of content as well as maintenance of continuity, routine, and regular connection. I do believe. Is that all of them, Nadine? Yes, there were just two, and those are the summary for each one. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Wishing this for vodka. So, just so I understand uh, correctly, uh, but what she was saying was that what he's requesting is for us to approve just the first reading. So it allows you to move forward and start talking to uh, the unions and trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, because a first reading doesn't approve it. It's just simply saying that we've read it, we're aware of it. Now let's go back uh, and let's and let's start talking and working through these things and figure out a way where we can mitigate these things and get them solved. Um, you know, and, and still maintain the integrity of the policies so we don't have any uh, legal issues with federal or state laws because our local uh, negotiations and our side letters and our MOUs are binding. Uh, they just, the, the policies just set a framework and then we decide internally how we're gonna deal with it. So, and, and if we don't get to that point where it's good, then then we can table the next one and keep working, right? It's just that I just wanna get this ball rolling and started so we can go ahead and start working uh, with teachers and, and get, a, get this re resolved, so. I have confidence and trust that um, you will uh, get either um, feedback or create a task force or a group of people that will uh, uh, help you with the, with you know representatives um, from all uh, parties that are needing. Um, how are you going to move forward in 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 knowing who's going to be uh, putting having input? I think, you know, for uh, January, when I got sick and, and I've not been able to make it, we used to have monthly meetings with the SRTA. And, and I, I think that I'll start there. Uh, I'll contact uh, Kate and Jill tomorrow, set up a meeting early next week with the site reps. That way they can have conversations with their sites and their, and their teachers. And then they can bring those things into a meeting because that's manageable. If we have, you know, 12 or 15 people, we can manage that in a, in a meeting on, online like this, uh, and then they can go back. And so I think it's just gonna be more of a dialogue than just simply a, a steering committee or, or a, a panel. I think I just need to engage and have those conversations because that's really where we were really effective in addressing issues when we had those dialogues and conversations, because that's where we, it's hard to go back and forth in negotiations. The, in a room with, with 12 or 15 teachers and they can all and we can just discuss things so and then we go back uh, with the negotiating team and get the language that and i think i'll start with the representatives the site reps 
and the officers and then and then move back uh, past that into the more formal. So we'll start informal, engage all the site that has to talk with other teachers. And of course, I'm always available to take phone calls from anybody, uh, but then I, and then move back into the, the process of mitigating, uh, you know, any kind of impacts that might be occurring. So, uh, and I think that's, but we're just starting the process with this. It's the first reading. It's, it's not, there's nothing, nothing binding, but it starts the process. That's all. You know, I, I look forward to the collaboration and, and, and the output of that collaboration in our, in our next revision. With that, you know, uh, hopefully, energy, I would like to uh, motion to approve. Yeah, I, I second to approve the first reading. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so it passes by zero as the first reading with our understanding, you know, the work that Tim's going to go forward. Um, meeting with the site reps, and I really I appreciate that. Um, so going on to 8.1, consider approval of resolution number 20.05.08, calling for an election for the purpose of electing successors to the terms of office, which will expire in 2020. So, our days are numbered. What can I say? I, I know it. Put me out to the pasture. I understand. <laughs> this. Revolt, revolt. <laughs> 8.1. Yep, it, it's a democracy. We got to abide by the democratic process here. Um, so, just to clarify, um, my seat and uh, Mr. Patel's seat are going to be up this year, and then uh, Ms. Hargi Saldana's seat will be up for someone for two years, um, and then they would have to to run again. And then we've also um, we passed the board resolution saying that after the 2020 census information is available, that will go to district. Elections, which won't happen for these seat, three seats that we're discussing for, you know, another four years. So at some point, we're going to have a hybrid where we'll have some board members that are elected from trustee areas and some board members that are elected at large. But it will ultimately um, transition into um, people just being um, elected from trustee areas. So, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, on the on the for Ms. Aldonia's application, the mention is a full term for four years. But from what I understood from the previous conversation, was whoever runs for that position, if she does, it only be for two years, or is it for four years after that? It so. it should only be for two years. And usually, when you go to the elections committee, like when you have when you register to run, um, they'll ask you, are you registering to run for the two-year seat or are you registering to run um for the four-year seat my understanding is the voting to uh, that we, we do the election correct um jacob i understand your question let me um i I don't have that page up in front of me, um, so let me let me pull it up. Do the rest of the board members have that page? The second one. What? I do. I I have it. Do you want me to read it? You want me to put it on the screen? It looks correct to me. Except for and bottle, that should be contained to two years. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was Jacob's question. Yeah. So for that one, I would make that change for two years to finish up the term, but everything else is good. Um. But once again, that's a supporting document. I think the purpose of this uh, agenda item is to move forward with the election. Is that just supporting material, correct? 
that we can change? Yeah, that? yeah. So I, I don't, I don't think um, that we need to. Um, Sarah. Yeah. Real quick, all of this information has been sent to Jenny Brown, and I just got a text from Juanita. The county office, we've already sent all this forward, so you guys don't need to do anything. It's a matter of approving this resolution so we can move forward with our work. But you understand that Jacob's talking about the backup document as an error. It needs to be oh. modified. Okay, so make, when you make the motion, make the motion with that modification, and we can and we can make that. We can right. do that. Okay. Uh, I motion to approve, what is it, uh, 8.1 with the modification on the support document changing Amparo uh, Saldana's term to finish out, the, to change it from four years to two years. Do I have a second? I second that. Okay. So I'm, um, so Mrs. Saldana is, is the recorded second, all in favor? Aye. 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 So that we will, um, because an election that be in in November. Okay. Thank you, and thank you, um, Mr. Sandoval, for for catching that because I didn't. Um, okay. So we are now on to uh, ten point oh. Um, talking about anything that we want um, in future meetings. Um, Neil, I wanted to let you know, I talked to Tim and Melissa a little bit about doing a presentation about what's been going on with distance learning. So um, that will come and what we were talking about is doing like one, one sort of slide with words on it per school and then one slide like with pictures just to, and um so that we just have a little synopsis from each site about things that are that are going on and i specifically mentioned and i know a bunch of you already um are see the the bulls and Oles facebook uh feed on your regular facebook and i felt like they've been doing a really good job in terms of posting you know, pictures of students' work and talking about what's been happening even with the uh, distance learning. So I was imagining, you know, sort of something like that, just a little short and sweet um, per site, you know, samples of what's been what's been happening with the students. So that's something for, um, you know, a future agenda. So are there other things that um, people would like agendized in the future? Miss Ariana, did you have anything that you no, wanted? No, Sarah, not this time. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Patel, anything? Neil, I don't have sound with you. We can't hear you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. You know, I think we talked about uh, looking at the budget and the projections. So I'm looking forward to that in the next few meetings. You know. Um, you know, and, I, and also for the presentation of the distance learning and how that's going, because I really hope the output of that comes out to where teachers are learning from each other and learning from best practices. So I hope by, you know, having teachers lay out what they are doing. So, you know, it's a way for teachers to learn from each other. You know, and that's what I've been doing at my high school uh, teaching jobs. So I hope that's the fruition of, of sharing of the uh, DL learning in our district. Thank you. Um, Tim, if there's anything you need from us regarding graduation or anything else, you know, please let us know. Um, I had fun the other day when I was getting to take my little piece at the, the Crossroads Church. It was really fun, and they were incredibly accommodating. Um, and thank you to everybody for all the amazing work that they've been doing under really trying circumstances. So, um, as of now, the next regular board meeting will be Wednesday, May 27th, 2020, and we are going to be adjourned at 7.30. Be safe, everybody. Be safe. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.